Assalamu alaikum friends, I hope you all are doing well. Today we'll be looking at Legionella pneumophila. But before getting into the video, I'd like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcomed in the comments section. So, have a cup of tea and let's get started. Legionella pneumophila. It's a weak crumb negative rod. Why I'm saying it weak? Because it stains faintly with the traditional gram staining. So we go for another stain that is silver stain to visualize Legionella as it stains poorly with the gram staining. It's an aerobic bacterium. It is not responsible for forming spores. It is motile. The reason is it has got a flagella at its one end. So it's a flagellated bacterium and it belongs to Legionellaceae family. Legionella pneumophila is an intracellular parasite. For replication, it infects soil amoebas and freshwater protozoa. They help it replicate to a large number. These amoebas also enhance its survival and under adverse environmental conditions, the amoebas insist ensuring both their own survival and the survival of intracellular Legionella. Legionella pneumophila is oxidase positive. It's also catalase positive. For those of you guys who do not know what is catalase, it's an enzyme that is released by certain bacteria, which converts hydrogen peroxide into water and oxygen. And oxygen is responsible for forming bubbles. So whenever we perform a catalase test, Legionella pneumophila always gets the positive test. As in this picture, you can see Legionella, which is rod-shaped bacterium, pink in color. Legionella pneumophila is responsible for causing legionellosis. That has got two categories. First one is Legionnaire's disease and the second one is Pontiac fever. We'll be looking at them in detail in clinical findings section, so stay tuned for that. And Legionella pneumophila is also responsible for causing pneumonia, as its name shows that. The second word, pneumophila, shows pneumonia. It causes three different types of pneumonia. One is lobar pneumonia that is caused in one of the lobes of the lung. It also causes interstitial or atypical pneumonia and nosocomial pneumonia. Nosocomial means hospital acquired. So you can memorize the diseases caused by Legionella pneumophila with its name. The first word in its name is Legionella, which relates to Legionellosis, and that has got two categories, Legionnaire's disease and Pontiac fever. And the second word, Pneumophila, that relates to pneumonia, and there are three different kinds of pneumonia caused by this organism that is lobar, interstitial or atypical, and nosocomial pneumonia. Now let's have a look at the history of Legionella pneumophila. How was it named? When was it named? First, we'll look at how the Legionnaire's disease was named and how the genus Legionella was named. This was named after the famous outbreak of pneumonia among people attending the American Legion Convention in 1976. So Legionella from Legion Convention and Pneumophila from pneumonia. The second one is Pontiac fever. It is named Pontiac because its first case was recognized in Pontiac, Michigan. Before talking about Legionella in more detail, let's talk about bacterial classification. Bacteria are further classified into sparachetes. They're also classified into acid fast based on acid fast staining. And there's an exception that is Mycoplasma bacterium. Bacteria are also classified based on gram staining into gram positive. We are done with all of them. If you guys are interested, be sure to check out the channel. And into gram negative, which are further subclassified into cocci like Neisseria, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, and Neisseria meningitidis. And also into rores, which are further subdivided into aerobic like Pseudomonas, anaerobic like Bacteroides and Fusobacterium, and facultative, which are further subdivided into curves that includes Campylobacter, Helicobacter, Vibrio, and straight, which is further subdivided into three categories. First one is enteric and related, that includes E. coli, Enterobacter, Serratia, Klebsella, Salmonella, Shigella, and Proteus. The second category is zoonotic, which includes Brucella, Francisella, Pasteurella, and Yersinia. And the third category is the respiratory, that includes Haemophilus, Bordetella, and Legionella pneumophila, the topic of today's video. Lecture outline, we are done with the introduction of Legionella pneumophila, we are done with the bacterial classification, now we'll be looking at morphology of Legionella pneumophila, its habitat in transmission, pathogenesis, clinical findings, lab diagnosis, treatment, prevention, and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Here, I would like to take a moment to thank TrueLearn for sponsoring today's video. 
TrueLearn is an online study platform that is designed to help medical students and even professionals. Whether you're preparing for your school exams or high stakes tests like USMLE or Comlex, TrueLearn could be just what you need. TrueLearn focuses on providing you guys, medical students, professionals, with realistic exam-like questions. All you have to do is to click on the link in the description. This is the beautiful website of TrueLearn. Sign up. This is the TrueLearn's amazing dashboard. Here you can create your own test. Give it a name, select its time limit and type of question. And also you can select if you want a tutor or not. Create the test and ta-da, test is ready. This is the question, read the statement and answer it accordingly. If you got it right, that's awesome. And if you didn't, no worries. TrueLearn is there to help you. It provides a detailed explanation for the right answer. TrueLearn also has a progress tracking system, which can be found on the left side, just there. Here you can track your progress and you can also search a specific question if you want and you can do it there. So, if you're interested in signing up on TrueLearn, all you have to do is to click on the link in the description and use my special discount code MEDZOHRAF at the checkout. And enjoy learning. Morphology. Legionella is a rod-shaped bacterium. It's a bacillus. As you can see in this picture, these are its rods. It stains faintly with gram-negative, but it does stain. That's why it's red or pink colored. Structure. Legionella pneumophila is a non-encapsulated bacterium, which means it has got no capsule around it. It is not responsible for forming spores, but is mortal because it has got a flagella at its one pole. This is how Legionella pneumophila looks like under the microscope. It's a rod-shaped bacterium and is pink colored. The reason is it is gram-negative. I know, I know, it stains faintly, but it does stain. Habitat. Hosts. Humans are its hosts. And Legionella is also chiefly associated with environmental water sources, such as air conditioners, water cooling towers, water taps, sink, showers, hot tubs, etc. So, the outbreaks of pneumonia in hospitals have been attributed to the presence of Legionella in water taps, sinks, and showers. Legionella can replicate to large numbers in free-living amoebas in these water sources. The amoebas also enhance its survival. Under adverse environmental conditions, the amoebas insist, ensuring both their own survival and the survival of intracellular Legionella. Transmission Transmission occurs via inhalation of aerosolized water contaminated with bacteria, the Legionella pneumophila. For example, in water sprays, if somebody inhales it, um, for example, mists, if somebody inhales the fragrant mist. And the portal of entry for Legionella is your respiratory tract. There are certain risk factors that are associated with the diseases caused by Legionella, and they are smoking and alcoholism. It is also associated with patients suffering from ADS, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, patients suffering from cancer, and those patients who have got transplants in their body, specifically the renal transplants, and also those patients that are treated with corticosteroids. Pathogenesis. Now let's officially talk about how the Legionella is responsible for causing the infection. As its route of entry is the respiratory tract and it's, it enters through the aerosolized water that is contaminated with the bacterium, the Legionella. So its site for pathologic changes is lungs because it causes diseases that are associated with lung. As its name shows that it is going to be pneumonia. In severe cases, bacteremia occurs bacteria from lung gets into the blood and causes bacteremia, which is accompanied by damage to vascular endothelium in multiple organs, especially brain and kidney. The major virulence factor of the Legionella is its lipopolysaccharide, the endotoxin, and no exotoxins are produced by Legionella that might play a role in its pathogenesis. Clinical findings. First, we'll talk about a detailed kind of clinical picture of diseases caused by Legionella, and then we'll look at the specific diseases, right? The clinical picture can vary from a mild influenza-like illness to a severe pneumonia, accompanied by mental confusion, non-bloody diarrhea, which is obviously watery diarrhea. Protein urea, mean protein will be present in urine and microscopic hematuria, which means that on examination of urine under the microscope, blood was found in it, because hemat is related to blood. 
Cough is a prominent symptom, but sputum is also spitted uh, while coughing, and that sputum is scanty and non purulent. Let's talk about Legionnaire's disease. It presents with symptoms like high fever, CNS symptoms like we talked about, the mental confusion, the GI symptoms like watery diarrhea that we talked, the non bloody diarrhea, and certain other GI symptoms like nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain. Now let's talk about Pontiac fever. It's a flu-like form of Legionella infection and is self-limiting, but it presents with symptoms like mild fever, malaise and fatigue, headache, chills. Lab diagnosis. We'll need three samples, sputum, blood, and urine. Then we'll go for microscopy. And on gram staining, this bacterium stains weakly, but it does stain with gram stain and is pink colored. Sputum gram stains reveal many neutrophils, but no bacteria. As it stains poorly with gram staining, so we go for silver stain to visualize it. It is a bacillus bacterium, which means it is rod shaped. It is pink or red colored. As you can see there, Legionella is a rod shaped bacterium. Culture Legionella fails to grow on ordinary media in a culture of sputum or blood but it will grow on a charcoal yeast agar that's a special medium supplemented with iron and cysteine. And the colony's morphology is grey-white with a textured cut glass appearance, as you can see right there. A certain other organisms, I mean bacteria like Brucella, Francisella and Pasteurella, they also use the buffered chocolate yeast agar. So how do we distinguish all these bacteria? While culturing the Legionella, we'll use antibiotics and silver stain to prevent the growth of the other organisms. Other tests. Detection of Legionella pneumophila antigens in the urine is a rapid means of making a diagnosis. The urinary antigen test is available only for serogroup 1 organisms. If tissue, the lung tissue, is available, it is possible to demonstrate Legionella antigens in the infected lung tissue by using fluorescent antibody staining. Cold agglutinin titer does not arise in a Legionella pneumonia, in contrast to pneumonia caused by mycoplasma. We can also go for hyponatremia, which is the cerium sodium that will be less than or equal to 130. And the diagnosis usually depends on a significant increase in antibody titer in convalescent phase serum by the indirect immunofluorescence assay. Treatment. Azithromycin or erythromycin, with or without rifampin, is a treatment of choice. Certain fluoroquinolones such as levofloxin or trovofloxin are also drugs of choice. This organism, the Legionella pneumophila, frequently produces beta-lactamates. So, penicillin and cephalosporins are less effective. And the diseases caused by Legionella resolve spontaneously in 7 to 10 days. But older or immunocompromised patients will have a fatal infection. So, prevention involves reducing cigarette consumption and alcohol consumption, which means smoking and alcoholism should be avoided. Removing aerosols from water sources and reducing the incidence of Legionella in hospital water supplies by doing certain water purification methods like high temperature hyperchlorination and there is no vaccine that can help prevent against the infections caused by legionella pneumophila all right everybody let's have a quick recap the organism we discussed today is legionella pneumophila it is responsible for causing legionellosis that is legionnaire's disease and pontiac fever it also causes pneumonia of three different kinds like the lobar interstitial or atypical and the nosocomial mode of transmission is via the inhalation of aerosols from the contaminated water sources Hosts are humans and is also found in environmental sources such as water tanks, air conditioners. Diagnosis is based on gram staining, microscopy and culture. But for rapid diagnosis, we can go for a urinary antigen test. Treatment, azithromycin or erythromycin with or without rifampin is a treatment of choice. Certain fluoroquinolones such as levofloxacin and trovofloxacin are also drugs of choice. And that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any suggestions, feel free to leave them below in the comments. And if you want to connect with me on my social media, I've got my Instagram and Twitter, both with the handle Medzokhev. And I'll see you in the next video. Till then, Assalamu Alaikum.